Hey team, welcome to today's video. The purpose of this video is to talk to you about font strategies inside Google products. I will specifically work inside Google Slides today, but the strategies that I'm using inside Google Slides will also apply to Google Docs. So right now I have my template, I have a specific slide, an image behind it, and I have three text boxes. In my opinion, the text that has been selected for each of these boxes is kind of bland. It lacks a little bit of pizzazz, doesn't have a lot of creativity, and I want to change that. I want it to look way more awesome than it currently does. I'm going to click inside right here where it says welcome to the, so that my toolbar up here will change. The toolbar now recognizes that I'm working with text, and so therefore I want to utilize the different tools that are available to modifying text. I'm now going to click on the down facing triangle right here where it says Arial, identifying the name of the font. Inside this drop down menu, you'll notice at the top it says More Fonts. Now, More Fonts is not the title of this specific box. More fonts is actually something that you can click on. When you click right there on more fonts, a box will appear letting you know that there are several other fonts to choose from. We have four different boxes to work with at the top. Right here, you'll notice that this specific box lets you search for a font by name. And then these three boxes right over here allow you to search either by script or by style or by timeline or popularity. I want all of them in alphabetical order. I want the ones that were recently released that I haven't seen uh, in case I've been here recently. And then the last item is trending. And my assumption is that popularity and trending are somewhat based on timeline. So trending would be something that's popular right now, but popularity might be overall historical popularity over a long period of time. Let me go ahead and choose all fonts and let me go ahead and choose display. So display represents something that's going to be bold, could be an advertisement of some kind. And you'll notice on the left hand side when I click any one of these fonts, two things happen. There's a little check mark and it turns blue. And then another thing happens on the right hand side, these items are now populating inside of my fonts. So Google is only going to give you access to some fonts in your fonts drop down menu and you're the one who's in charge of how many fonts you want access to at any one given time. In this menu on the right hand side under where it says my fonts, if you ever want to take any of those away, simply click on the little X right there and it will no longer be available to you inside of that drop down menu. Now, if you did, if you did that on accident and then you change your mind, that's totally fine. Just search for that font all over again, click on that word, and then you'll notice that it will reappear on that right hand side. All right, I think I have chosen enough fonts uh, for now for illustrative purposes so that I'm modeling for you how this works. And let me draw your attention to the right way and the wrong way to move on from here. Over on the right hand side, you'll see the X right here. And there was uh, one time where I ac actually clicked that and then I got out of this window and I had lost all my hard work. I had found all these cute fonts. <laughs> but because I didn't click this button over here that says OK, then I didn't save all that hard work and those adorable fonts did not come with me. So don't do what I did. <laughs> don't make that mis mistake, please. Feel free to head over here and choose that blue button instead so that you save your hard work. So let me click OK. Nothing dynamic happened on the screen, but you're going to see what I did in just a second. Let me uh, click right here in this blue box. It says welcome to the. I'm going to go ahead and illuminate that text because if I don't illuminate the text, then my hard work's not gonna be applied in just a second. I'm now up here inside the font box area. And when I scoot down, you can see how the fonts that I selected are now populating inside of here. And I'm gonna choose this one right here. Let me click one time and you'll notice how the font changed. Let me apply some more changes inside of these other boxes to choose this one. And you know what? Sometimes I don't always know exactly the font that I would like to use when I'm trying to pair fonts together. And I recently discovered this really cool tool 
let me go ahead and take you over to fonts.google.com. So here I am in fonts.google.com and this is a fantastic tool, in my opinion, fairly good tool, to observe or to look at what different fonts look like given a specific text. And it usually defaults to this sentence. You have the ability to come up here to this down facing triangle and you can choose other things to look at when you're looking for a font, or you can actually put your own text into right here where it says type something. Hopefully I typed that correctly. Sometimes I have to redo videos all over from the beginning because I realize there's a typo in there. So let's just hope that everything is spelled correctly. And you'll notice how I put the and symbol in there because sometimes I'm a little bit persnickety on what that looks like. Now when I scoot down the screen, I have several different fonts using that specific text and I can see what it looks like. Let me scoot up to the top and show you a few other features. Up here, I can also search for font properties that allow me to choose the number of styles, thickness, slant, or width. And then right over here for categories, I can choose a variety of different strategies. Maybe I don't want all of them. Maybe I only want this one. And then all of the other ones that represent the other cat characteristics will be gone. Or maybe I want to get rid of the ones in a different category and so therefore they will populate. It's not just the ability to locate a font by its name. So right over here, you'll notice the author or the designer, the organization that made this font possible, but also the specific name of that font. Okay, that's lovely and delightful. But here's another thing, in my opinion, that's super cool and can save you a lot of time. Let me go ahead and click on this one sample font. The screen's gonna change. This specific item right here where it says pairings, in my opinion, it's super cool to see how that particular font is gonna interact with other fonts. And there's usually only a, a limited number. And when you click on it, you'll notice how font number one and font number two are representative of these two samples. And this arrow, when you click the arrow, font number one will take on the position of font number two, and font number two will take on the position of font number one. So if you're wrestling a little bit between, mm, do I like these, this pairing? Do I not like this pairing? This is one strategy. Using this drop down menu, you can also choose characteristics of that font in order to determine whether or not they behave well together or not. Just wanted to share that super cool strategy with you so that you had access to that. If you're working with a Microsoft product and you actually want these fonts to be downloaded to your computer, you can actually click right there and then download them to your computer. I'm not gonna teach you how to install them, but I will let you know that it is available right there. All right, friends, let's head back. Here we are back in our presentation and I wanna make some adjustments to the location, maybe to the size. And then I also want to adjust the font style for that last one. So let me go ahead and illuminate the text. I'm gonna choose that drop down menu. I'm gonna choose this font. I'm gonna put the and symbol in here and I'm gonna type more information here. From a design perspective, I would prefer that this get dropped down here. From a design perspective, I wanna offset this a little bit to the right. I want my audience to see that in an offset fashion. I'm gonna use the arrow key in order to scoot that. I want the letter T and the letter N to be lined up well on that right-hand side. And then I want welcome to the uh, scooted over. Strangely enough, it's not going to be lined up. I'm going to have this one scooted over just a little bit. There we go. My audience can clearly see the information that I wanted on display. And I'm going to pinch this up just a little bit. I'm going to hold the shift key down while I use the arrow up so that it moves up incrementally. There we go. And hopefully there are no typos and that looks crisp and well organized. All right, friends, thank you so much for paying attention to today's tutorial and I hope you have a great day.